Joining us now from the ECB uh, in Frankfurt is Isabel Schnabel, the uh, economist at the University of Bonn and member of the German Council of Economic Experts. Isabel, really good to speak to you today. Uh, uh, so the news flow there surrounding what Merkel does next, but this has a bearing on whether other prominent Germans take top jobs in Europe. And so my thoughts turn to the ECB. Do you think Weidmann would be a good fit for ECB president? So he's certainly a very qualified uh, candidate. So I think what will be critical is whether he's going to change his, his attitude towards the OMT, because I think the OMT, the whatever it takes, uh, is uh, crucial for the stability of the euro area. And in the past, of course, Jens Weidmann has been very critical uh, towards that. And uh, I think uh, he uh, would have to adjust that attitude. Isabel, I, I wonder, you know, when I think of Jens Weidmann, I think of this very German, very hawkish um, personality. And the country in general has gotten a lot of criticism for refusing to spend its uh, massive surplus for the advantage, for, for, to the benefit of the rest of the European Union. Do you think it's time for Germany to loosen the purse strings a little bit? So actually, fiscal policy at the moment is relatively loose, so uh, I, I wouldn't worry about uh, this uh, too much. I mean, uh, the, um, the German uh, economy is doing still relatively well, so we are not approaching a recession. The, the first quarter was reasonably well. And, and regarding Jens, Jens Weidmann, I, I wouldn't underestimate him. So uh, I, I don't think the way that you characterized him is, uh, is perfectly uh, fair, because I think if he became the head of, of the ECB, of course, uh, he would have a different role. And uh, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Isabel, uh, you mentioned some of the resilience in the German economy, but clearly this is an economy that is very outward looking and very exposed uh, for better or worse to the global trade story and it's exposed to global tensions between the US and China. Yes. How severe an impact do you think these trade tensions will have on the German export engine? Yes, yeah, so this is of course one of the biggest uh, issues. Also if we look at the German economy in more detail, what we see is uh, that some sectors are doing very well, like uh, construction and services, <coughs> whereas manufacturing uh, is not doing so well. And, uh, and of course, uh, the, the question is whether this uh, slowdown in manufacturing is going to continue. And this will depend very much on how the trade conflict develops. And you're perfectly right that uh, Germany is very vulnerable in that respect. Yeah. I, I don't want to let go of the, of the spending question, Isabel, because since moving here, I've noticed construction sites everywhere with nobody working on them. The infrastructure for living and doing business in Berlin is um, decrepit at best. The airports are not quite modernized outside of um, Frankfurt and, and Munich. Um, and, and the military doesn't have the capabilities that it needs to um, to work with NATO or to defend Europe. Why doesn't Germany spend more money? Uh, so I, th I, th I think you're correct characterizing it uh, not in, a, in the uh, correct way because, uh, in fact, spending has increased uh, quite a bit. Uh, I agree that more uh, could be done, that uh, we may need more spending on, on infrastructure, on defense, on uh, education, but uh, you should be aware of the fact that this is already uh, happening. Of course, there are certain uh, constraints when it comes uh, to construction, for example. There are actually also capacity constraints. Uh, so uh, uh, at the moment, uh, the construction sector is, is very uh, difficult uh, because uh, the, the capacities are actually exhausted. But the ECB and the EU do push Germany to spend more money for the good of the EU, and you don't think it has to be done? Well, as I said, I think at the moment it's being done. The, the relevant question is what's going to happen if the euro area enters a downturn. And I think if, if it's Germany that uh, goes into recession, uh, it's very clear uh, that also there will be uh, more fiscal stimulus. The, the interesting question, of course, is uh, uh, if Germany itself does not enter uh, a recession, but other countries do. So will Germany be willing uh, to spend more then? And that, I think, is an open question.